the moment when you realize you ain't making it all in one trip. I have uh, started and not finished like three different videos in the past few days <laughs> because every something keeps coming up. Let's let's start another one. Why not? What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and as usual, I am running late. I am running out of time on my Sportster build. I'm running out of time to get packages in the mail. I worked on the Sportster this morning. We went to the iDubs fight. Which one of those do you guys want to see first? Why don't we go ahead and uh, roll that iDubs footage right now. Don't film me without my pad on. I'm not all buoyed up yet. Now I'm ready to yeehaw. All right, Shay Tree Surgeon and Shay Lisi here with another video. We're heading out to see iDubs at the Creator Clash. And some events like this call for a slight flair for the dramatic. Been a big fan of iDubs and everything he's ever done on YouTube. He was a huge inspiration to um, us starting our channels and everything like that. And he'll never have any idea who we are, but that's okay, man. The, he's a big reason of why we make the videos the way we make the videos today. We should so. make hair cake else, <laughs> but... No, no, that was iDubs threw up the hair cake. That was iDubs. That was iDubs? He was That there? was iDubs, Max. Oh my gosh. Dude. Are you serious? This With the airplane. Back? It was back. It was just in Shaylisi's video like a minute ago. Chill. As I was saying before, so so rudely interrupted by a 45 mile an hour prop plane. Uh, I dubs, Max Mofo, Filthy Frank. No, I'm not saying that our videos are like their videos, uh, but they were just when I first started doing YouTube, those guys were all there. And it was a huge inspiration for a lot of the way we do things. And when someone looks at our channel and they go, man, you guys do so, do it a little bit different than some of the other guys who do motorcycle content on YouTube. Yeah, because I grew up watching Hair Cake. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot, it has a lot to do with what we were watching. Well, no, that's off. You can barely find it you anymore. Can't find it's, only up, anymore? it's only re-uploads, yeah. Banned, forbidden content. Anyway, we're definitely late, so let's roll. Yeah, you know, I do actually want to go to this event, which is weird that I'm riding the VMAX because at all the bikes out here, it's the least likely to make it, but <laughs> at all these bikes, not all of them start right now. Weird looking back and you know, having made YouTube videos for 10 years or over 10 years at this point I think and I had a, a YouTube account literally in the first six months that they they opened it so I've had a I have had a YouTube account registered since 2005 fingers crossed because I don't have any mirrors to see if it happens and just in the in the 10 years just in the 10 years uh, <laughs> Obviously, a lot of people have been on YouTube a lot longer than I have, but just in the 10 years that I've been making content, I have seen YouTube go through a lot of weird changes. Some good, some bad, but even with all the good changes, all the bad changes and everything like that, I've never stopped having a good time on YouTube. YouTube is always just still a blast. And it's wild to be going to a boxing event. <laughs> How bizarre is that? Boxing event featuring iDubs and epic meal time among other people right now. Like people that I grew up watching on YouTube. When I say grew up, I think I'm probably older than iDubs is, but you guys know what I'm saying. I've just been watching a lot of these guys make YouTube videos and make content since YouTube, almost since it very first started. As I was saying before, like the way that they did stuff and the way they made videos, you know, Filthy Frank and iDubs and Max Bofo and oh, anything for views and all those guys. And I still love watching Cold Ones. It's still a great episode. It's still a great show. Yeah, there's still those guys are still out there doing stuff. It's just wild to see everything having come this far. And we have our fun on our YouTube channel and I love and I love doing it, but you know, we're just very, very tiny channels in the grand scheme of YouTube. Even in the grand scheme of YouTube, even iDubs and a lot of these guys have small channels. They're just legends, man. Guys who are paving the way, guys who are pushing the limits and pushing the boundaries of what kind of content you could put on YouTube and still are. Kind of nice. It's kind of important. It's kind of a big deal. It's kind of funny way back Back in the day, whenever I used to not release videos for a week, sometimes I would know what was gonna happen, like when I'd go on a trip or something like that, and I'd release these videos, hey, I'm going on a trip, and I'd give people uh, three other content creators that they maybe hadn't heard of that they could watch while I wasn't making content. And I always 
try and I had nothing against all my motorcycle guys, but I was like, oh, let me introduce you guys to some non-motorcycle content creators. I released a video and I had way more subscribers than all of them at the time, but I released a video featuring three creators. One of them was iDub's girlfriend or wife now. I'm not sure if they're married or not. Well, yeah, one of them was Anissa Joma. And the other two was a channel called The Right Opinion, which was like, the guy doesn't show his face. He just does deep dives on different YouTube stuff. Uh, and then the, the one after that was Leon Lush. Leon Lush at the time might've had the biggest channel, like 30 some thousand subscribers. But uh, I had over doubled and than all of them and uh all of them are well anisa doesn't make youtube videos anymore but leon lush and the right opinion are i think they're both over a million and leon lush has a gigantic channel now so hey there you go man i've got the i've got the magic touch all it takes is a shade tree surgeon shout out and you're for sure gonna make it yeah right if i knew what it took to make it I would have made it a long time ago, I guess. So does Shade Tree Surgeon have the magic touch or uh, does he just recognize good content when someone else is on the come up and uh, try to jump on those coattails before they get too big? Nah, whether I was trying to ride coattails or not, I wasn't lying about the good content, so. <laughs> It is stuff I like, although Anissa just does switch now. The Right Opinion will still do a video every once in a while. Not super often though, but I'll tell you, Leon Lush, Leon Lush is still making regular content and is absolutely killing it and his videos are top notch. I wish I could be half as hilarious as that dude is. Just makes great freaking videos, man. And I tell this to people all the time, if you're trying to make a motorcycle channel, which I love motorcycles, that's what I wanna do. I want to make motorcycle videos because I love motorcycles. I don't wanna make other videos. Like, yeah, I don't wanna make just these deep dive videos or these commentary videos. I wanna make motorcycle stuff because that's what I like to do. But I'll tell you, if you, the, you wanna make better videos, you always, you, you gotta look outside the box sometimes. You gotta watch how other people do things. You gotta watch how other creators make their videos and just take a little bit from every other place and then make it your own with whatever you're trying to do. And that's just something we always did. Now take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because obviously I'm not a millionaire and I don't even have close to a big YouTube channel, even in the motorcycle world. There are guys who have stopped making videos who have channels that are bigger than mine that I'll never even get to that size. So like I said, take it with a grain of salt, but eh, that's what I've always done. Well, I guess I can't complain too much about going to a boxing match or making me run out of time because that was a, eh, we had a lot of fun there. That was cool. Now, I didn't bring my cameras into the actual arena because I was like, oh, it's a pay-per-view for charity. So I figured uh, they wouldn't want cameras in there because they're trying to do a pay-per-view thing, but it looks like everyone else had cameras. So I was like, ah, oh, I guess I'm the only dipshit who was like, oh, let's not bring a camera into here. But hey, I'm sure you guys, if you guys want to see the fight, there's plenty of it online now already. I dubs put in the work, man. That dude freaking must to train really hard and while he did lose i can tell that he really busted his ass in training like i said i shouldn't complain because that was something i did for fun how dare you i'm also running out of time on my sportster and i was working on it earlier today uh go ahead and roll that sportster footage What's up, Rudo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and uh, it's crunch time, baby. The time has come. The time to finish the Sportster is nigh. 10 days away from when I'm supposed to hit the road, and, uh, and we're not done yet. <laughs> I still have a piece of wood holding in the seat, among other things. That might just stay. That just might be the way it is on this trip because I've got some other more important stuff than a piece of wood holding up the seat uh, that I got to deal with right now. So let's try and knock some stuff out because I'm the heart attack kid, man. I love just doing things last minute. I love just just, you know, jumping in feet first and sending it without testing anything, but we're getting really close right now. I'm sure a lot of people are just like, man, he just really knows how to pump up the drama for views. He just wants to go like, oh no, will it be done last minute? Like, I wish I was making all this up. I wish that this wasn't actually the way I am. I wish that I really had my shit together. This was all some sort of elaborate ruse to make things seem more dramatic. No, this just, this just is the way it is, okay? First things first, uh, I hate to replace it because I like this like easy off screw right here. And I actually think that this air cleaner looks really cool. It's called a ham can. It's kind of like an old school custom air cleaner, but with these louvers on it, as cool as it looks, I'm just kind of afraid about 
water. I mean, this is an adventure bike. And while it is custom, it's not like a chopper where I can, I want it to be functional. You know, everything on this bike's gotta be functional. And this is really cool and I really like it, but I think I'm gonna replace it with an SNS teardrop just because the SNS teardrop is all the air comes from the back side of it. So it's gonna have a lot more rain and water protection than something like this is. And oh well, you know, maybe I'll be able to use this on a different project. Next up, we do have to do something about not having any handguard protection. It's not so much to prevent me smashing my hand into a tree, although that part is nice. This is more just handguards to save levers more than anything. And the problem is, is almost nobody makes one inch uh, handguards. Now there's a company called Storm and they make a one inch adapter. Now here's the problem with Storm and their one inch adapter is they have the adapter. I was able to get the last one left on Revzilla, but Storm doesn't have any stock of their bark busters in like they have nothing that I can put on the bike so I ordered a pair of Sykra bark busters that hopefully I can make the one inch adapter work with but there's only one way to find out not grips that were designed to be used with bark busters I do have to cut the ends off so this is the one inch adapter from Storm and these are the Cycra handlebars and I also got these reducers to use because these are for one and an eighth fat bars in the middle which I have one inch bars all the way across. So I'm, I'm, I'm having to modify these all the way around. I really do hope I can make the Cycras work. Not that I have anything against bark busters but I've had Cycras on every single dirt bike I have and I've used a bunch of other bark busters and nothing holds up like Cycras. These things are so tough. Seven Seven eighths connectors because one and eighth fat bars are seven eighths on the outside and one and an eighth on the inside. The problem with using one and seven eighths bars or seven eighths bars on the outside is I actually would have preferred seven eighths bars because I'm so used to riding off road with seven eighths bars. It's just it, all the controls and the brakes and the clutch and switching all that over to seven eighths is a real pain in the ass. So I don't know how these work, but most. Bark busters and most stuff that like bar end mirrors, they all kind of use the same thing. So I'm thinking maybe this part goes in the handlebar and then this goes in this, like it would have yeah, that looks like it it looks like this is gonna work just fine. Hey, that looks like it's not gonna fit in at all. Uh yeah, actually that doesn't fit in the handlebar whatsoever. I don't know why that is. So one inch bars. Dang. Well, that would have worked great if this actually fit in there. It's like not even close to fitting in there. Well, at least they weren't very expensive. I do have one other option I can try. So the other option I have, because I was worried this might not work, uh, is I just ordered these one inch like Amazon special bar end mirrors because I figured these bar end mirrors, these go in and work the same way as most of the mounts for bark busters do. So I figured if these are one inch, I can just steal these mounts for my bark busters. So let's see if that works. Okay, I've had to make a, a couple of harsh realizations and, and the admission, these bark busters just aren't gonna work. I was just trying to jury rig it and fiddling and fucking with it and doing all these things and I just gotta go ahead and say, that I, it just it, it was a bridge too far. There's one too many band-aids and one too many paper clips like trying to make something work that isn't supposed to work that once you start getting with that level of bullshit complexity and nothing's actually machined, it's just my like try at home bull crap. This isn't something that should be on a vehicle that is supposed to go off road. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut through the Gordian knot, order an extra clutch lever, order an extra brake lever, which are like $10 a piece. And hopefully these Cycras will <laughs> find their way home on a on a different vehicle because they weren't cheap but i'm gonna have to chalk that one up to life is hard it's harder when you're stupid more like uh life is expensive and it's more expensive when you're stupid 
And I was unable to get the sports shirt done because, uh, <laughs> I, is that closed? Uh, no, it's not closed, but hopefully it'll be all right. I was unable to get the sports shirt done because I had to rush home and get orders packed and I got them all packed up. I didn't actually film me taking them to the post office. I normally do. Didn't film me taking them to the post office because I got them all packed up and 47 individual orders, t-shirt orders dropped off at the post office with no manifest. <laughs> with one minute to spare, I literally walked in at 459. Well, another one of the reasons they love me down there. I'm trying to be better about getting the orders out in a timely fashion. Like, I ain't Buddy Bezos, okay? I'm not gonna, you ain't gonna get two days shipping that old shade tree surgeon, but I'm trying to get better about getting them out faster. Just recently, we had some uh, pretty rough personal stuff happen that uh, prevented us from getting some orders filled as fast as I would like to. <laughs> well, thankfully, the old shop truck, Bar Vader, was able to take every inch of that load so you might be saying why aren't you going back to work on the dirtster after you finish packing the orders and dropping off the post office with one minute to spare and pissing off everybody there well the reason why i'm not going back to work on the dirtster right now is because it's richard boom's birthday and we throw a party every year for his birthday the dirty shame and uh i gotta go set up for that and bartend every year on his birthday we just uh, get a little bit of food and we line up uh, as many free irish car bombs as people show up and we never advertise it because i don't really want to advertise free drinks but you know the people who know about it know about it and they come and have a good time and Richard kind of likes it that way keep it a little uh, low key and it's not like I'm uh, regretting having to go work it you know Richard's given me almost everything I have in my life right now I owe him so much he's been my mentor he's taught me how to run a business he's taught me how to work for myself and it's been like a father and a brother and a friend all rolled up into one so I'm more than happy to come up here and bartend his birthday and you might be asking yourself well Josh after you get done bartending Richard Boom's birthday, why don't you just go work on the dirt store after that? Well, after uh, Richard's birthday celebration is over, uh, you, all those sunshades, those red things you saw me load into the back of this thing, we are uh, hanging those up. Me and Kirby are going to hang those up on the patio because we have to get ready for, <laughs> for her market, which is um, a hair past a freckle, let's see here, like six days away. Her market, Sunday, May 22nd, the Rats and Wrath Market, which is where we will be giving away, we'll be pulling a winner for this motor cycle so yeah there's kind of a kind of a lot happening okay <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, there's always a lot happening, so it's okay. We thrive in chaos. We love it, baby. We are chaotic good. And what is chaotic good without a little bit of chaos, huh? All that is well and good. But in the meantime, I've got one mission right now. That's uh, do a bunch of car bombs with the man himself, Richard Boom. The story of my life. What's the most interesting bike in the parking lot? Is it the Purple Dyna, the Supercharged H2, the BMW R1250? Hey, what's up? Hey, baby. Uncle <laughs> the Honda PC800, Vintage Evo, Dyna, Kawasaki, Concourse. No, baby. It's the Shrek Mobile. 
<laughs> and it actually is, though, Mike. <laughs> this is the most interesting motorcycle in the parking so, so lot. I put white LEDs in these lights, so when you start it up, it kind of looks green. <laughs> I was riding this motorcycle. Oh my gosh, dude. This is fucking great, man. And if you didn't know, um, you can pick a CD to use as your air cleaner cover, but you better pick something cool. Uh, shout out to Whiskey Chaser. He sent it to you? He gave that to Mike Branch on your trip. If anybody has a Shrek, a Shrek DVD, they want to replace that with a true blue Shrek DVD, just send it to the P.O. box. All right, it's a harsh light of day. Made a little less harsh because now we've got some shade on the patio. Eric is being so kind. He's being so kind to me as we roll around in his little clown car and both lubed ourselves up to the Fiat. He said, I did a good job. It feels really good to hear someone say you did a good job. I love being lied to. I did a bad job, but they're up. I think when other people do it, they look like artsy. You know, these are just kind of up. I think we need like six more. And what I found out too is that when a human brain, especially a human brain like mine that doesn't work very well, like I never took geometry, I never got past algebra. I found out that working with squares is not that hard, but working with triangles is very difficult. Triangles are weird, man. Like you think something's gonna work, but then it doesn't because it's a triangle, dog. Triangles are, triangles are wild, man. And then also I was very, very drunk while I was doing this. Well, I don't know, I guess there's shade. Well, then what's gonna happen is the sun's gonna get to like a certain angle and just like blow everybody out of the water and he says, oh well, they're up. I tried. It's off to pick up the STD 1100, the itchy red sport touring bike. The Honda ST 1100, rib for your pleasure, baby. And we get to ride around in Topo in the little adorable Fiat. It's just like this cream and red adorable thing that I have to literally lube myself up to squeeze into with Eric. But I'll tell you this, man, you can forget Thelma and Louise, man. You're looking at the new hot boy summer over here. Me and Eric look freaking tough, baby tough with this thing. I don't think I'm gonna do 55 on it. I did 40 right here. <laughs> well, like I said, there's always something neat up here at Forgotten Angels. We're picking up the STD 1100 for Eric over there. He's gonna get back into adventure riding, but we've got the C4 600. I was like, what the hell is this? This is a CF Moto four wheel drive, 600 CC four wheel. When I first walked up, I thought it was a Grizzly because it looks like, that's what it looks like. You know, I'm sure everyone loves to talk crap about the Chinese CF Moto stuff, but this is, all they had to do was call it something different. Instead of calling it C-Force, they should have called it the fucking, um, take the C off of it, just call it the Force Basher or something. Instead of the CF Moto, just call it like Force, a force to be reckoned with, the Force Smasher, like something like that. That's the problem with these Chinese companies is everyone gets them and they're like, okay, this is the Dong Fang 1125. And you're like, dude, you guys need to hire somebody from America who also speaks Chinese so they can be like, don't call it Dong Fang. I realize that your company's called Dong Fang, but it's not gonna go over so well in the States. Dude, fuel injected, it's got a freaking LED display. I mean, this feels like a, all the stuff looks nice. A start button that's on the left, how dare you. Ooh, a thumb throttle, I haven't done one of these in forever. Oh yeah, you gotta put it in drive. Dude, I haven't ridden a four-wheeler in I don't know freaking how long, man. Yeah, I know, right? I probably should. Yeah, every time I ride a four-wheeler, I'm just like, this seems dangerous, man. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> the whole four-wheels thing kind of freaks me out. I, you know what also freaks me out is also like the CBT transmissions, man. The CBT transmissions always are weird. because I'm just like, it sounds like it wants to ship but all it's doing is keeping it in the proper power band, probably better than I would. Every time I get on this bike, every time I get on this ST1100, I'm like, damn. This is actually a really nice bike. I can't believe that this bike was made in I'd say either an 89 or a 90, I forget, but it's such an old motorcycle and I can't believe how good it is. I mean, even my Goldwing, my Goldwing's great. It's absolutely amazing, runs forever, but definitely feels like a motorcycle from the 80s. This, besides the carburetors, does not feel like a motorcycle from the 80s at all. This feels like it could be on a showroom floor right now. You know, when you see me, you might look down and go, <laughs> hey buddy, is that a beer in your pocket or are you just happy to see me and i'll just look at you and go nah baby that's a hard on you gave me that uh-oh the fuzz the bike cops they wouldn't pull me over we're, we're both riding motorcycles uh somehow i think i might still get pulled over <laughs> that's a, how about you anyone in the comments been ever pulled over by a motorcycle cop 
on a motorcycle. So excited for Eric to get back into riding. I mean, he's got that XLCR, he's got the Harley. Just an awful bike. I mean, it's rare and it's collectible, but it's just an awful motorcycle. The Harley factory cafe racer from the 70s. It's built around an iron head. Anyway, he's got that, but that is not exactly an everyday motorcycle, okay? Eric, and it's Eric, it's Buffalo Bill. I always call him Buffalo Bill on the channel, but his name is Eric. He's a dear friend of mine. And uh, he had a VFR back in the day, and he, he rode that across the country in the 90s, like with Matt pre-cell phones and GPS's and all that crap. So Eric's definitely got some miles under his belt and some miles on a V4 under his belt. He's got this uh, 70s Volkswagen Westphalia camper van. So it's a VW bus, but it's a camper van and it's so freaking cool, man. And so he's been restoring it and modifying it and he's basically gonna start taking trips in his van. And I'm like, dude, this Westphalia is so freaking cool. It's so neat and your camping trips are so cool. Like you need to film this because people want to see it. I think people want to see it anyway. So if you don't want to see it, I'm going to make Eric film it for nothing. But <laughs> either way, I want to see it. So I'm going to make him film it. This bike, the ST1100, now I'm like riding it to Eric's house. I'm about to let him have it. I'm just like, damn, dude, I'm going to keep it now. I like bike. This is every bike I get on. I'm like, I don't know, I want to keep it, fuck. Legitimately, this would make a way, way better everyday motorcycle than the, than the mail order glide would. All right, well, we were uh, busy working and busy getting drunk last night, so me and Air Bunny here are going to lunch. Hey, I'm taking my little gay son here to lunch. <laughs> It's a lumber Jill. Uh, I don't even think that Marin, that Arab Honey here, knows how fast this motorcycle is. Uh, this is a Kawasaki H2, it's supercharged. This is a 240 horsepower motorcycle. Now, she still is just like, that means nothing to her. But she goes like, okay, that is an amount of horsepower and it means nothing to me. You just have to take my word for it, it's really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, she just called me out on the old school bike. She used to think I was cool. I remember when Shea Tree Surgeon was cool. He rode around thousand dollar motorcycles across the country with me on the back. And I freaking, you know, he's in the big time with the Kawasaki H2. <laughs> Arab Honey is already not having it. Huh? You've got a great butt. Hop on. Are you having fun yet? Marin, don't worry. It's just like a cockroach. I'm actually more scared than you are. <laughs> this motorcycle is absolutely ridiculous. The Kawasaki H2, 240 horsepower. It should not be allowed. Yet here we are, the pinnacle of stupidity, me and Arab Honey sitting on top of an absolutely insane death trap suicide machine. Well, I guess it'd only be a suicide machine for me because, uh, you know, <laughs> Marin's just holding on back there. She doesn't have much choice in the matter. You see, when you're riding around a 240 horsepower death trap, like this the trick is to have a passenger just to keep me honest like if i'm doing this thing by myself oh man I, then i'm really gonna be in trouble wait anyway, we're rolling up on the end of this video as uh me and arab honey back here hop on the death trap just a mechanical middle finger to the to the entire world is what this motorcycle is this is just kawasaki's anger given form the kawasaki h2 is what happens when kawasaki he tries to give the whole world a nice dependable motorcycle and the world turns up their nose at it and they come back with a vengeance to murder every single person who wouldn't buy a nice motorcycle well this is what you get all right well uh i think air is officially mad at me i was not even trying to do a wheelie <laughs> I really wasn't, and uh, the front wheel just pulled up off the ground, and I thought it grabbed me really tight, and I think for the rest of the ride, I'm just going to go ahead and chill out, because <laughs> I want to be able to survive lunch, okay? Oh, I'll tell you guys this right now. I know that, uh, <laughs> you know, normally I'm on a cruiser, I'm on the Mormon Glide with a big old backrest in between me and whoever's on the back. When it comes to a sport bike or a standard like this where somebody's got to hold on and uh, there ain't a whole lot of room in there, let me tell you... <laughs> Uh, as I always say, I might be a good dog, but I'm still a dog, baby. And when I'm on a bike like this, eh, sometimes I aim for the potholes. You're right. The gold wing's better. Well, they have <laughs>
Yeah, there's no armrest, there's no cup holder. What kind of motorcycle is this? You get the big Kieran. It makes you look like a freaking total sissy. Put sake in my beer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess now it's a little tougher than that you put sake in it. Is that a thing? It sounds disgusting. It's hot sake, too. It's a sake bomb. You're supposed to chug it. <laughs> oh. You know, like if you're a tourist. All right, go ahead. Chug it, pussy. This is what you're supposed to do. And then you brush off and oh. you bang. Oh, sake, sake. and everything, baby. I like getting it in a sandwich because it just looks like a big old giant cockroach sitting out of, sticking out of your sandwich. I thought you were gonna be like, oh my God, Marin, I'm just kidding. You give me that. That does sound like me. Mm -hmm. All right, baby, sushi for lunch and uh, Sushi Ninja is not disappointing. We have everything from, what is it? I forgot what it was already. That one's got kimchi on it. That was, I'm really excited about Crazy. that. Salmon lover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that is. Arab Honey's all about the salmon. I think that's the one with the crab. That's a, it's got Alaskan crab meat on it. Is that what it is? Hell yeah. Sushi Ninja sounds kind of weirdly, weirdly a little racist, the Sushi Ninja. Maybe not racist, just like a little on the nose. And then it's also a Korean place, not a Japanese place. Were ninjas Japanese? I thought ninjas were all amphibious reptiles from New York City. The concept, slightly troubling. The name, a little weird. The food, amazing. <laughs> that, that supercharger just sounds freaking insane. Oh, well, that's gonna about do it for this video. I know we we're all over the place on this one, but uh, it's been a hectic couple of weeks. It's been a hectic couple of years, okay? Uh, but we're getting back on track. I got deliveries back on track and heading out at a decent time now. You know, they might not get there in two days, but I promise I'm gonna at least have them shipped out in a couple days now. I just had to, like I said, had some personal issues. I had to navigate our way through and we're getting ready for Natalie's Cuomo show. We're doing her podcast on Thursday. Thursday. Then this coming Saturday is going to be Natalie's show at Side Splitters. The Sunday after that, the Rats and Wrath, Kirby Kelsey's Market under my under my triangles. We're doing that at the Dirty Shame. And then uh, we're giving away a bike that day. Now, not a Kawasaki H2, but we are giving away a Pacific Coast 800. And whoever wins that bike, we're going to fly your ass down to Tampa. You're going to party with us for two days. And we're going to give you enough gas money to get back home. I don't know. Maybe you don't want the beer and the partying and the debauch and possibly a tattoo and it is florida come on vacation leave on probation baby but yeah you know, we'll, we'll try to keep you out of jail but still have a really good time let me know down in the comments if you're going to be at natalie cuomo's show we're meeting up at birch around three o'clock her show's at six we're gonna be doing a little ride from birch over to her show uh, and then of course you know the the rats and wrath market the next day let me let me know down in the comments if you're going to be able to make it it's going to be a freaking awesome time i'm going to be there you guys voted uh i did have a vote on what t-shirt y'all wanted to see next and i don't know if they're going to be here in time to sell at the market but hopefully fingers crossed i have some brap star t-shirts limited dish baby that will be selling at the uh at the rats and wrath market but we'll see what happens we'll see how it shakes down you know there's uh even though it's only a few days away there's still a lot that's got to happen between now and then so you even though it was nice uh, taking a little lunch break on the Kawasaki H2 with Arab Honey back there and finding every pothole in Tampa. I quite enjoyed that. But uh, back to work, baby. Luckily, it ain't that bad because I'm working towards something that's really, really fun. And uh, a lot of my work, it ends with partying with all of you guys. And I like that. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what I feel.